We are back again here on the Emerald Coast, and as I'm sure you can tell by the diamond challenge in the top left, we're in multiplayer, and what I want to do for this hunt is not focus on any particular species. I feel like our last couple of hunts, we've decided to, you know, specifically go for kangaroos or crocs, and it's pigeonholed our hunt into certain parts of the map. So today, we're going to let the hunt take us wherever it does, and hopefully, we get a chance to win that diamond challenge and add something cool to our trophy lodge. And not a bad start. Got a pretty solid Rusa deer there, and actually a not too bad one just beside him, but the back one is definitely better. And of all the time we've spent hunting for the deer species, Rusa is still one that we've not had a diamond of, and I'm going all the way back to early access here. We have shot, I think, three or four level fives, all of been trolls, so that would definitely be something to look for, and I do think they look really cool. I think of like the diamond antlers for the new species, they are my absolute favorite, so we will be spending some time in Rusa Deer territory, but like I said, I don't want to get stuck just hunting for one particular thing. This guy is a 119, not as big as I thought, but even at that, a pretty solid gold, and we had a warning call. I thought it was to the left, but could have been another male. I guess it must have actually been out in front of us. It sure sounded like it came like directly from the left side, but if he'll either turn back or just kind of stand straight, we'll just drop him with the next shot and keep on moving up through here. Just a nice little bonus Rusa on our way, and I'm just getting the tiniest bit of lag when we claim stuff, so hopefully we're going to be okay. It's been fine so far, but just don't want to end up killing something cool that we can't actually collect. Now, because of the fact that we are not really focusing on a particular species today, we may be kind of hopping around a little bit more than normal. And speaking of hopping around, we do have a group of kangaroos going by there. I didn't see any even level 8s. There's one in there that I want to get a better look at, though, because it just looks a little bit lighter than the rest. It could be just where it was standing in the light. I think it just may have been that level 6, in which case... We will probably go ahead and alert the 7 that was out front. Try to get him with the 7 mil. And as long as he kind of stands up and faces us at around 200 meters, that should be doable. I think we're going to be right into the top of the lung. Probably should have shot a little bit lower, but... I gotta assume as quickly as he went down, it must have hit something. And we have, I think, 3 aggressive bruises. So I'm glad I actually grabbed a 12 gauge buckshot. We did this recently with the 16 gauge, but I got the 12 gauge double barrel just kind of for fun. And I think this could at the very least be interesting. That one may have hit the water and turned around, but these two are still on the way. I want to try to get both. I think when we shoot, it'll probably spook the other. So we got to be semi quick about it and maybe even let them kind of attack a little bit. At least kind of do that posturing thing and they're kind of going back to where we were so we'll have to give them a second to come this way can we time this up that's what we wanted and i think we got them both what do we <laughs> this guy's still still going for it even though we made a vital hit what do we hit here because that's not vital blood oh all right we shot it in the heart i don't know why the blood showed that way and then this one Obviously being kind of broadside, lungs, stomach, took a little bit longer to bring it down. But that was everything I wanted out of that encounter and more. And we got to actually make use of the buckshot already. But kangaroo number three, which technically was kangaroo number one, we did shoot just through the top of the right lung. That actually wasn't bad at 200 meters, and he made gold, though not by a whole lot. But since the level sevens are hardly a guarantee, that's always a plus. And we may spend a little bit more time down here. I just wanted to check this spot. Again, it's this far kind of like southwest lake that seems to be loaded with kangaroos, but at least in this particular server, nothing too special. I do not think I've seen anything like this before. It's a ton of hog deer, but literally only one male. And he's not all that big. We'll kind of check. Yeah, there's maybe a slightly better one there, but I've never seen really so many hog deer in general in one spot, but especially so many females in one spot. I do think that second one's going to be our best option. He goes up to 88 as a level 3, so we'll try to get him with the 22-250. I'd like him to get a little more broadside. That'll do. And if you want to see the lake that we're at, it's this little one right here. 
What I'm actually hoping to do, at least in this server, is wait until Bantang drink time, which is a little less than 30 minutes from now, and maybe do a little bit of running the coast and looking for them. It's always tough with them because there's a bunch of crocs over there and those will spook the Bantang, but at the same time, it's probably the best way to see a bunch in a short period of time. So for now, we'll make the most of Hogdeer drink time and maybe try to get a couple more. 75 score for that guy's not bad for a level 3. Single long and actually that was a medium lead rate with the 22 250. I don't know what... Oh, we have that thing where our dog is like going to be invisible for the rest of the hunt, so that's good. I guess we're not going to have any more uh, utility from him, but we'll check some of the other lakes in the area and maybe go by the creek again. We did get our pie up there. That could derail things a little bit. Got a max weight red fox track here. And the surf edge just down here. Now, the couple of different directions for tracks probably isn't ideal, but this could help us based on age. It's very old, but the red fur type could very easily be a level 7 or a level 8, but we have never killed, to my knowledge, a diamond with this particular fur type. I think all of our diamonds are the dark red variation, so we'll put in some time trying to find this. I mean, we have the time to kill for the moment. Oh, actually, I bet we just spooked it. That's going to be our fox, and he is, unfortunately, a level 7. So, no red variation diamond for us. I guess we'll try to get this kind of like through the shoulder shot we may have. Also could have been spinal cord and just dropped him that way, but as a level 7, at the end of the day, probably doesn't matter where we actually hit him. And it did bring us right to the creek. Now, from the last time that we did this, I think we had more hog deer drink zones on the east side of where we are now, so we'll probably turn and go that way even though the wind isn't great. And I mean, maybe that'll work out for the best, tracking this guy right to at least one of the options we had. But as for a score on him and shot placement, that was... Oh, a neck hit, actually. Not what we were going for, but we'll take it. 12 score on the money. Maybe that's a sign that he has led us here for a reason. 12 always has some kind of significance. Ooh, that is a pretty good-sized stubble quail. I don't know if we have bird shot loaded. I really hope we do. I'm kind of thinking about the fact that we missed that. We might not have... Now that was bird shot, but neither of those shots actually hit. He's still, like, within range. That got him. I don't know, I felt like those shots should have hit. That one also looks kind of light in color. That's just sort of the back of it, though. Let's see. 235. Just three shy of diamond. He was obviously a level two, so not necessarily one we'd expect to make diamond, but so close to 0.13 kilo. That would have been insane if that ended up being a diamond, but definitely the best one we've seen. And that is not a bad sample. Plus there's a red deer right in front of him. Let's just take that shot from here. Gonna have to almost shoot between the red deer's antlers, but feels like that should be doable. I'm gonna say that'll work. And there's actually another max estimate stubble quail track, so maybe we'll follow that? Just gotta check, it's just now. How far away is our sandbar? We might just mark that and come back. That's the sound we need. The only thing would be if it's a group of them, identifying the right one, because if it's not a level three, then it could be a fairly low, oh, it is a level three, okay, forget that. Can we hit that? We did, he was only up to 242 though, I think. 238 is diamond. We just saw that. Could we have a diamond stubble quail? We do at 239. I'm not going to say that 12 squaring red fox led us to this, but it pretty much let us do this. That is amazing. I literally can't believe that. The, the chain of events that led from red fox to stubble quail to sandbar to go claim it, then to this guy. That is really, really cool. I don't know what we're going to do with that yet. Because they... If you guys haven't seen one of the lodge yet, they are really tiny. They, there has to be a spot we can choose that will show it off decently well. But I think that's going to be a bit of a challenge. Let's go get our sandbar. And then it's about time to go over to the coast and hunt for Bantang. Now, someone's been over there, so we may not actually worry about it too much. Especially now that we just got that. 
I'm just <laughs> stunned by the way that worked out. So our little sandbar sandwich here with the stubble quail on either side, even if that is a 157 light brown? I don't know which fur I like for these the most. I mean, obviously the rares are quite cool, but this light brown is a really cool variation. If I got to choose as far as common variants go, that might be the one I'd want a diamond of, but let's go see what we can do for Bantang quickly. And it looks like our timing is pretty decent. We've got a herd of Bantang on their way down to a drink zone, and there are gonna be a bunch of crocs down there, so probably it'll be best to try to take this guy from here. I really don't know if he was alarmed at us or the crocs. It probably could have been either one. But I just kind of thought of this. The initial shock of that stubble quail actually being a level 3, I, I just was too surprised that that happened to consider it. The two diamonds on Emerald Coast that I thought could be the biggest struggle to get would have been Magpie Geese and Stubble Quail. Of our first three new diamonds we've gotten, two of them are those. We also have, obviously, the diamond Eastern Grey Kangaroo, but I'm kind of shocked we have it and obviously not going to complain about that one bit also got an aggressive female croc here might as well take care of that with the seven mil i think we got a good shot or we hit it one more time so a little bonus croc for the road and we already know bantang should be on the way down to their zones and we also know crocs are likely to spook them so we'll be scanning as far in the distance as we can and hopefully we'll at least get our eyes on a herd or two Ooh. Just about spooked a level 5 Bantang as well. If he'll turn broadside, because with the 7 mil, I don't trust going for a heart shot. We'll try to get that in there too. And the other thing is, there's just that chance he ends up spooking from a croc. So he's down to alert. He may be trying to come right down to here, I don't know. But I don't want to let him get like too far out of sight and then end up spooking. That's kind of what we want. I don't even think he knows where he's trying to go right now. Going pretty much broadside. And he's down too attentive and he goes through this gap. We should be able to slot that shot in behind the shoulder. And he's aggressive if we need, but I think that's going to be an okay hit. Maybe it wasn't. He's going down. Not as fast as I would have liked. That kind of freaked me out. I don't know if we hit vertebrae or something. So I think we got a heart shot the second time and maybe we should have just gone for it at first, but what the heck? All this time spending multiplayer and like nothing and then we just get in the right spots at the right times and not quite back-to-back -back max levels but pretty close i forget the minimum estimate but he was up to like 146 he does look really good as well if i'm not mistaken this is the black fur type which if he makes it would mean he's the exact same fur type as the diamond that we shot in the untamed species video with expansive world so let's see Diamond at 143, and the black fur type indeed. It was always, and we did get along by the way, so we would have been safe. Just felt like he was taking a long time to go down, but from the moment that we ended up shooting that in the video for Expansive Worlds channel, I've wanted one like it because I thought it looked so cool. I think this one might be a little bit bigger. I can't actually remember, but it looks incredible. Just a really, really nice looking animal. So now we have... I think four of the eight new species diamonds here on Emerald Coast. And honestly, at this point, we could go up the beach further, but this was the thing we were coming here for, and we just got it on literally the second herd. So I say we take the biggest, at least stature-wise, and smallest animal from the Emerald Coast and take our diamonds back to the trophy lodge. So what I decided to do was actually put both of our diamond quail basically side by side, for one, it shows even just how much smaller the stubble quail are than the bobwhite quail. I think it's like 0.13 kilo for this guy. This was back when the female bobwhite quail made diamonds. This would be like 0.16, I think. And even at that, she's considerably larger than our diamond stubble quail from today. Then above that, we've got our first diamond bantang, at least that we can get to keep here in the live game. They are just so cool looking. I'd love to get more of these around the lodge. I do kind of wish they went on the deer size plaques because at least from the neck forward, they're considerably smaller than something like the Cape Buffalo that we have beside it. But I just think with the variations, the horns, they would look really great all scattered throughout this lodge. And 
now that we have one, hopefully we can start to get some more. But as I said, we now have half of the new species as diamonds from the Emerald Coast. And go figure, a 12 scoring red fox got us started and led us in the right direction today. But anyway, that is going to do it for this video. So as always, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you next time.